This is the Random Forest Service. Scott Betts and Tara Edenhart Pepe presenting their final project for Musa 507. Parking is the dark matter of the urban universe. It affects transportation, culture, economy, environment, and land use in mysterious ways. Parking requirement ordinances are often misestimated and not based on empirical evidence, which leads to inefficient use of urban space. However, a properly trained model can make evidence-based decisions with minimal conflicts of interest and with better results. Welcome to Asphalt, for Paul the Planner and Wanda from the Water Department. In this slide, we see a general overview of the user interface for Asphalt. Step 1. Select the location. Step 2. Select data. Step 3. Look at the current site statistics. Then, tap and click, plug and play, and the app predicts parking demand by way of occupancy rates to total and provides a basis for estimating implications of demand when parking lot space is reduced. But why would we reduce parking lot space? We believe generally parking is over allocated and could be used more effectively if we depave portions of surface parking lots and convert to green infrastructure. The conversion will increase street parking demand and income, but by how much and where? If the current decision-making process imposed by zoning code rules for parking changed, could revenue be gained from the decrease in surface lots and increase in on-street parking? The asphalt app and model interacts with engineered features to produce estimates of parking demand for street parking in scenarios in which supply is reduced for green infrastructure and parks. Our app is intended and model is trained for a specific location, the city of Seattle, but could be trained for other locations. We have Seattle data at the city and county level. We've been very interested in the time series data, and we've begun sussing out which variables are statistically significant for parking demand volume, as you see in the core plots at the bottom, and we'll see in the last slide of this presentation. So how do we combine all of this information and what is the best model to use to generate the analytics that our app professes to be able to do? First, we joined all the data such that street segments of parking know all the variables within their zone. User interface is meant to replicate a SimCity type video game while also giving data visualizations and immediate analytics associated with design decisions. You can see the site from different vantage points here, oriented by the map at the top left. You can go back and forth between each view. Then users tap and drag pieces from a kit of parts and see what happens. If we want to allocate resources, we need to know the impacts of decisions to move or eliminate parking lot spaces. To that end, we are developing an ensemble model. As far as intended user experience, users immediately see analytics in our app and can adjust the design by adjusting the outcome and then going back to see what happened to the site. Parking rates are used to calculate fiscal impacts from increased street parking. This app further supports our use case in that our users are attempting to design and find support for designs. Once the planner publishes designs in the app, community members can view a pin board of available options and by clicking on thumbnail images, stakeholders are brought to a screen with more information about projected impact of proposed scenarios. So what's in the secret model sauce? We're looking at feature engineering including parking occupancy, qualitative differences between building types, different street hierarchies, and parcels. Time series data is especially important, as seen in the list here. To conclude, our next steps will be to predict for times not included in the data and on block faces that do not have data associated with them.